Well, building blocks can be either structural or functional. In terms of structures, we decided that we are going to have federal system. Ideologically, we said we were picking on liberal democracy. But then, you needed a different kind of emotional structure to hold the country together. What do I mean? The emotional structure is to see ourselves as one. We never agreed on that. So that part of the, our building block, the emotional side of it, because it is the emotional side that will show you I belong to this nation. I am a citizen of Nigeria, of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. We never agreed upon that. I grew up in the shadow of uh, nationalism, you know, when in our own time, when we were young, I see you, and I was, I, I adored Azikiwe. I liked his flamboyant speeches. That is, in fact, what made me study political science, just because Zeke's study political science. And you cannot grow up at that time without having that zeal that your country is going to become independent. You are going to have free freedom. You are, you, nobody else is going to colonize you. That is the kind of mentality that we had, some of us, you know, we are growing up. So um, with that, we thought that we will make it as a nation. So anything there are like this report of the Commission of Inquiries, some of us say, oh yeah, that's right. After some time, we'll begin to forget Hebrew, Yoruba, this, that, that. Uh, in my first book, I mentioned it, you know, that we call ourselves all kinds of playful names, Jamiri, Koboko, you know, uh, Atakara, uh, something like that. But that was lighthearted. We thought after some years, when we are doing serious things, those things will die out. But it didn't. It didn't. And that is what is creating the problems that we have now. The youths. They are not going to keep quiet. It has already started. When you have over 90 million youths that don't know what their tomorrow will be like, by the time I was 25 to, uh, to 30, I already knew where I was going. As I, you leave university, by the time you land in Nigeria, they tell you where you are going to work. You will be picking and choosing. But now, people get to university, finish their degrees and come out, and they don't know where they are going. That's why so many of them are who studied abroad are still there. It's not that they don't want to come back to Nigeria. And when those that are inside will really get tired of this thing, you don't need anybody to announce there will be a revolution. It will come. Is that the process of electing people who eventually we call leaders in Nigeria is faulted. If we don't change it, we will never get good leaders. I'm prepared to have indirect elections that will bring up good leaders if eventually than all these things they call adult and everybody they come and we go and mail around and you throw in your vote and it doesn't count and people go somewhere else and write any figure they like and collect money and go and people just get up and go and sit in the Senate and say, I must get my certificate. And somebody somewhere calls INEC and says, okay, issue that man a certificate. It has happened this last election, I'm sure you know. And they issued him a certificate and he goes and sits down in the Senate. When you, people know what happened at the lowest level that you didn't win this election or oh God. So, after changing our electoral system, 
then we change the constitution itself. Let's go back to the regions and let the regions, after they have selected their leaders, among those leaders, then they will select the leaders that will represent them at the federal level. Number three, we'll then tweak the constitution. The powers that have been given at the federal level, at the state level, and at the local government level. They were all built in the 1979 constitution. We thought we were bringing in something new. But one decision that the two political parties that emerged made, and even outside the constitution, was the issue of zoning. And at that time, some of us argue, I say, zoning is dangerous. Because where you have zoning, you can never uh, trust that you will get the right kind of leader. So if we have zoned to an area that cannot produce somebody with a school certificate, it means we, have, we are cheating ourselves. So you zone the politics to my if you zone it to my local government area, my own local government area in Abia State has 17 professors teaching in various universities. I'm not talking about lecturers. I'm talking about those who have already reached level of professorship. And look at us as a country arguing whether our president has school certificate or not. This country was built on the basis of economics, not politics. It was a first class administered state. Because it was administered as a unit, it then became a country with different problems. The British did not succeed in solving those problems. So they allowed us to still hold together as a federation with the iron grid of colonialism. Now that we removed the iron grid of colonialism, we did not replace it with any ideology that can help hold people together. And the question I still asking, what kind of ideology do we can we spin now that we hold an Igbo man, a Hausa man, Fulani man, a TV man, uh, Epic man, Ibibio man, Yoruba man, Urabo man, all see themselves as one. And I see it only in the economy. If I can make it in the economics of this country, and you can make it, and he can make it, and everybody is happy with the economy and how it is running then it is possible that in about 15 to 20 years or even 30 years, people will begin to learn again to live together. 